All right, today's the day for a little skull boiling. So what we're gonna do right now is walk you through full steps on how I boil a skull. Uh, it's kind of a interesting process, but I've been doing this for quite a while and kind of got a system down. But this is like, just like anything else, there is a million ways to do this. So if you have a way that works for you, by all means use it, but this is just a way it works for me. It's really simple, uh, keeps my skulls looking nice afterwards. So. What we're gonna do is, uh, this is Neville's 2019 Wyoming Archery Bowl, and we're going to finally clean it off. It's been sitting in our warehouse for way too long, so we'll walk you through all the uh, items for the boiling, and then we'll take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to uh, boil your skull for a European mount. You're gonna need some sort of container to boil a skull in, and since we have an elk here, we actually picked up this, I think at Walmart, just like a little ice tray thing. This is a little bigger pot just to fit the elk skull in. And then when I do deer skulls, um, you know, antelope skulls, I just use what's the little canning pot. Um, it's always good to have some rubber gloves. So have some rubber gloves when things get a little dirty. You want to have wood brush, baking soda, lighter, Dawn dish soap, and tin foil. This is like, like one of the items that sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, just to like wrap around the elk antlers, just kind of protect the antlers from being on here and prevent from being discolored. Assortment of knives. I think it's really ideal to actually have a knife that you want to uh, or don't care that you'll beat it up. That's why a lot of times replaceable have long blades will work or a bigger thicker knife for uh, scraping the skull. You're going to need a high pressure boiler, propane tank, and then afterwards we're going to use uh, this little high temp uh, portable heater to bake on uh, some of the solution over here. And we've got over here, this is just your uh, Salon 40 Peroxide Developer Cream. And this is just basic white. You mix both of these together and make a paste later on. But that's pretty much all the items you need. The only thing we don't have sitting here is some bubble wrap, which we'll get to that later. It's best to do this outside. Um, I have done these on my kitchen stove before at home. My wife was gone. So if you're gonna do that, make sure uh, your significant other is not there because it kind of smells like uh, interesting stew. So anyway, so we'll just get started here and uh, walk you through the process. All right, so the first step is gonna be just hooking up the boiler to the propane tank and getting this water uh, up to a boil. I will say that with a little caveat. Um, when I say boil, we're gonna bring this to a boil and then instantly drop it down to a simmer. We're actually never throughout this whole process are going to boil the skull. Um, if you do that, you're gonna end up with an animal like an antelope or a deer, you're gonna get brittle bones, the teeth are gonna start falling out or some of the bone material on the nose will start breaking apart when you boil it and uh, get your skull really brittle. So. Technically, it should be called simmering a skull. You're never gonna really boil it, so just keep keep note of that. But now I'm just gonna hook up propane tank. And now we're gonna light this bad boy. Nice thing you want to do too, if you have a pot that's really big like this, is try to get it centered right away because the sucker is gonna get hot. And so just make sure it's centered so it doesn't wobble once you throw a big giant elk skull in here. So you don't want everything to tip over or the water spill out and uh, get all over your elk. And also for the water levels, um, this is gonna be a thing you're gonna have to just experiment with. Um, you don't wanna fill it up too high, because if you fill it up too high, once I drop the skull in there, the uh, water's gonna go all over the place. So just kind of take some uh, guesswork to figure out how much water you're gonna do. So right now I'm just gonna let this uh, get up to a hot temperature before I actually put the skull in. So we'll just let this baby roll, and once we get to a boil, turn it down to a little simmer, and then we'll throw the skull in. Before I drop the elk in, I wanna talk about another little process that's gonna help make it a little easier for you. So you want to make this easy on yourself right when you need to kill an animal or bring it back to your house um, what you're going to want to do is really go over it you know remove all the hide the eyeballs nose you know obviously brain mat material if you're bringing it back from another state in your state a lot of states have those regulations now but you just want to clean up your skull as much as you can before you actually throw it in the pot the first time that's going to help make all these other steps a lot easier because this bowl right now Neville took a really good job of uh, removing a lot of the material so it's actually going to be a quick boil job for us step right now i'm going to do is I just like to use Dawn dish soap on this first go around. What this is gonna do is help uh, pull a lot of the grease out of the skull and also it's gonna help just break down a lot of the, the meat material to make it flake off a little bit. So I just use a healthy amount of uh, Dawn dish soap when I'm doing this. Just feel free to throw it all in here. It's kind of a, kind of gotta play with it a little bit because if you throw a lot too much in there, once you throw a skull in, you know, you could get a lot of bubbles boiling up. So just kind of watch for that. I will like take like an old arrow or an old like metal spoon, just kind of stir things up a little bit. That's going to be a lot of bubbles there. It'll be good. And now we're going to uh, go ahead and throw the elk in.
Guys, right, so this is the part two I was mentioning before. If you are, you know, really concerned about your antlers touching the, the side of the pot, you could take some tin foil, wrap it up right here, or wrap up the bases. But I usually never do that because I'm not actually putting any, you know, bleach material in here, so it's not going to, you know, bleach out the antlers at all. It is water and soap, so it's going to be fine right here. But as you can see, this bull wants to uh, tip back. So a little trick is going to be taking a piece of string. And we're actually going to tie a piece of string from his tine here to the edge of the bucket, and that's going to keep the nose uh, tilted downward. So I'm just going to hold this up, just tie it like that. And now my antlers are not like dipping into the water too much, but the nose is still in the water. Everything's been good. Now I just want to kind of monitor it a little bit and uh, make sure it doesn't get to a boil. Uh, right when it starts to get a little hotter and starts to boil, make sure you turn it right down, keep it at a simmer. But right now we should be good at this temperature for a while, and we're going to let it sit in here for about an hour, so come back and uh, come back and check on it in an hour. While this hour is going on, while it's in the pot simmering, you should maybe come check on it every you know 15 minutes or so to make sure the water temperature didn't get hotter and it didn't start to boil again. Because like I said, we don't want to boil the skull because that's going to lead to brittle bones, especially if you're doing a smaller animal like an antelope or deer. So just come back every 15 minutes, check on the water temperature, and make sure it's not uh, boiling. We want to keep a nice little simmer. So now we've had the elk in there for roughly an hour. Um, it's been simmering the whole time, so now we're going to pull it out and I'll show you a bunch of the material that will already be falling off. A lot of it will be kind of like caked up and curled over and we're just going to take the, uh, the knife, so this stiffer knife, and I'm going to start scraping a bunch of it, just trying to get more of it off and then we're going to drop it back in there again. So first round of the scraping, so as you can see, like I said, we got a bunch of material starting to pull back. So what I'm going to do is go through with the knife and just try to scrape off a bunch of it, just try to get a lot of it off before we boil it again, which just helps keep that grease off the skull and just keeps pulling it, pull the material away from it. So, and also during this step too, if you have access to a power washer, this is a great point to take a power washer, spray it all off, shit's gonna go everywhere, but you'll get it clean a lot faster. But we don't have that right now, so I'm just gonna use the knife. Start scraping away. Okay, another thing during this process, what you wanna do is I'm scraping this stuff off. I'm just gonna throw it in another little bucket, just make it clean up a little bit easier. And like this, a lot of it just pulls right off. Another thing that's kind of handy too, if you have a pair of pliers, a lot of times you can stick a pair of pliers, stick it in there and pull a bunch of this stuff off. It comes off really easy. Another reason why I like to use the uh, stiff knife during this process is areas around here like in the bases, you can stick the knife, stick it up in there and pull stuff down. That way you're gonna get all the, uh, you know, the fatty material pulled off there. And make sure when you're doing this, if you have elk ivory still in there like I just did, pull this off, the ivory was stuck in it, so. Right there, we have the uh, one of the elk ivories. Save that. As you can see, just finished the first round of scraping. Try to do our best just to get as much material off as we can. Um, based on some stuff I've done before, all these skulls I boiled, it's just like the more you can get off now, the less chance you have of some of this grease to bake into the skull. A lot of times you have a lot of the forehead stuff will start baking in on like deer and antelope, but just remove a lot during all these process, and then when you start re uh, reboiling again, it'll be a little bit. Uh, easier, stuff will start flaking off more. Um, another part too I want to mention, uh, when I do deer and antelope, I use a small bucket and so I will change out the water every single time. But since this is an elk and we really don't feel like waiting a bunch of time to boil more water, we're just going to use the same water we've already been using. Okay, so now for when I do the second boil, I like to add a bunch of baking soda in here. This is also just going to help pull all that material off and help it flake off a little bit easier. And also um, just kind of makes it easier to deal with so as you can see when you dump a bunch of this in there it's going to bubble up so you got to watch out and not use too much right away or otherwise you'll uh, boil over and at least wait another hour come back check it out throughout the whole process again maybe come out every 15 minutes or so just to make sure you're not boiling because again we just want a nice simmer and if you're doing this and you got a sweet bucket like we do bucket no bot happens to have a uh, bottle opener on it so if you want to sit out here and wait, have a little refreshments, get yourself a bucket that comes equipped with a bottle opener, a little tech tip. All right, so we just finished another round of the old simmer technique. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna pull the elk skull out, set it down, and we're gonna start doing some more scraping. So right away, you can see it's uh, getting a lot cleaner. It's a long process doing a European mount like this, but it's kind of nice if you can do it yourself, save money. And again, if you had a power washer in this stage, a power washer would be really handy, or a hose. Because a lot of times what I like to do, flip the skull around, and I'll take a power washer or take a hose, shove it in this back nasal cavity here, and I shoot all the stuff out. 
And then basically a lot of that stuff in the nose is gonna come flying out of there. So that's a really good thing too. Or if you have a, you know, an air compressor, you stick an air hose in there, shoot it out, it'll blow all that stuff out. It makes it a lot easier, but we're here at the office and we don't have that stuff handy. So we're doing it the old, old fashioned way. You can see here one of the ear canals already kind of popped out. A lot of times people will leave these in there. When you leave it in there, it just adds a lot of material that's hard to get out. And you just have to scrape it in there. It could stink later on. So what I like to do is either take a screwdriver. What I'm gonna do is stick this in the ear canal and just force this over. You hear it cracking. And there we go, just removed a bunch of it. So right there, I just removed part of the ear canal. There are parts on the ground right now. That just adds a lot of open space. We can get a knife now and pull that out. You don't need this. This is not gonna affect a European mount. If you have a you know type of design that sticks in the skull to hold it up, just makes you so you can get all that uh, extra material out really easy. So pop your ear canals out. This one's in there. Do the same thing. Stick it in the ear. Pop it open, and uh, makes things a lot easier. Now we're back to the old scraping knife technique. Just trying to get everything out we can. What we're looking for is stuff like this that just pulls out super super easy. Just pull it out of its sockets. That's why the second part of the whole boil process is kind of nice because now the first time we weren't able to get a lot of this material, but now the second boil through, a lot of it's just a lot softer, um, just, you know, more broken up so easily you can just barely, barely touch it with a knife and a lot of the stuff's falling off. I'm trying to avoid uh, a lot of the knife work if you don't have to. That's why I said before the pressure washer technique or sticking a, you know, an air hose in there is going to blow this stuff out. All right, so now I've gone through the skull with a knife a lot, through a lot of scraping after the second boil. Now a really handy thing to do is take a long needle with those pliers. That one's even longer, it's gonna be a little bit more helpful. And you actually can go into the nasal cavity and start grabbing out a bunch of this stuff. Love it, just comes sliding right out. That's what you're looking for right there. You get a lot of the big gunk in one little go. I still like to be careful in here because sometimes, yeah, look at that. Depending on what kind of mount you wanna do, a lot of people could leave in these nasal cavities on the inside, or sometimes on the deer and antelope, I'll run through here and just demolish them. Because to me, you can't really see that anyway. Look at a European mount. So if you're doing this for a friend, you might want to ask them how they want their mount, nasal, nasal cavities left in or nasal cavities pulled out. All right, so we're at the end of the process here for doing yourself your own uh, European uh, skull mount. For right now, I'm going to walk you through uh, how to go ahead and whiten your skull. So it's a pretty easy process. What we're basically going to do is take some tin foil, um, wrap it around the bases. You don't really have to do this step, but it kind of helps a little bit to eliminate the chance for to get some of this whitening agent onto the bases. And then we're just gonna take some of this uh, Salon 40 and some basic white. And we're gonna mix it into a cup. Best to use a red Solo cup and not a off-brand. So make sure it's a legit Solo cup, it's key. Um, and then you need a brush. Basically what we're gonna do is mix these two things together, roughly 50-50, and you're gonna kinda want it to be like a uh, yogurt type paste. And then basically we're just gonna take it, dip it in here, and we're just gonna start uh, painting it on everywhere. And uh, the key here is just use a lot. Uh, don't just you know thinly do it on here. Just put a lot on there. And then we're gonna take some bubble wrap, wrap everything up in bubble wrap, and then uh, put it next to a heater for a while. So let's get started here and uh, show you the process. So, all right, so like I said earlier, first step's gonna be taking some tin foil. And we're just going to go around the bases here and just wrap them, kind of protect them a little bit. But you can take it and conform it with your fingers to make sure it's just on the edge of the of the burr. But we still get some whitening agent right on the sides here. So it doesn't have to be pretty. Just kind of want to put it on there, make sure it stays. And now that part's done. And now we're going to do the old mixing part. So let's get both these open. So what I like to do is to first use the um, Salon 40, because if you do the powder first and dump this in there, a lot of times it you know, poops up at you. And if you really want to kind of be careful when you're doing this process, because you don't want to get the stuff on your hands, because eventually your hands will kind of, you know, bleach a little bit and then your skin will peel off a little bit there. So, something to watch out for. And again, we're kind of looking for like a yogurt type paste out of this. All right, now it's just uh, taking the solution, put a big gobbit on the brush and just start painting it on. As you can see, it's also good to put down a uh, piece of cardboard because if you're doing this on a table, it's going to drip down and then stain whatever you have down below it. So what I just try to do is just paint everything, make sure every little crevice has a bunch of coatings on there. Anything that you can really see, you want to cover a lot. So like top of the skull, 
You wanna make sure this is really coated. Um, bottom of it, you don't have to worry about it too much, but you still wanna coat the bottom. The next step is going to be, we're gonna wrap this skull in bubble wrap. Get it kind of tight, use some tape if you need to to kind of hold the bubble wrap on there, and then we're gonna put it in front of a heater. Just a little electric uh, space heater. So just start anywhere, put this on there, and then kind of start wrapping it up. One thing to watch out for as you're wrapping this around, if this stuff gets in contact with the skull, you don't wanna to try to like get it on top of the antlers, or if you grab something and you got a bunch of the goop on there, you don't wanna grab your antlers either because that'll also, um, stain your, your tines a little bit, so just keep, keep note of that. Right, so I can take some tape, put some tape around it. Just kind of hold it in place. And now we're gonna take this, put it next to a space heater. So that's gonna be the next step. And then we're gonna let it, uh, usually about like 20 minutes per side, and then we'll rotate the skull, another 20 minutes on there, and just like bake it for an hour, hour and a half. Uh, elk skull, it may even go like two hours, but let's get that done. One thing to also note too, you wanna keep checking on this. You don't want this thing to be leaning on it or touching it, because you don't wanna melt the uh, bubble wrap, start a fire. So just be aware of the surroundings when you do this, and uh, just keep checking on it. So we'll leave it here for about 20 minutes, take that heater, rotate around this side, rotate around to this side, maybe flip the skull over to the bottom. And then we should have a European mount that's uh, looking good, ready to hang up. Had this thing going for two hours, rotating it every so often to give some even heat. But basically what we're trying to do right now is just uh, bake all the solution into the skull. It's kind of like uh, you go to a salon, see a bunch of old ladies with the little thing over their hair, like baking a bunch of stuff on for their hair products kind of what this is like right now. So we're just baking all the solution into the skull, trying to make it a little bit wider. So now we're gonna open this up. All right, so now you can see here, we still have all, that, all the product on there. So what we're gonna go do is take this under like a garden hose, that sort of thing, and just kind of wash it off. We'll stick it in a, a tub back here and rinse all this off. And then boom, we got a skull ready to rock. All right, so we just got done washing the skull. After I have a little solution on it, and you can see here it's a lot whiter than it was before. Um, this process is not going to get it like super, super white, but it's going to still, st still like allows it to have that natural skull look, but just makes it a lot cleaner. Um, gets rid of some of the grease lines, some of the, like, the you know the little crevices in the skull. Clean that up a little bit, get rid of a lot of the black on the teeth and that sort of thing. So pick up the tin foil off the back. Another process we could do here is just take this back, maybe take like a toothbrush and that sort of thing. So we still have some of this goop from when we uh, were actually simmering the skull earlier. Just get rid of that to clean that up. But as you can see here, we have a really, you know, clean looking skull. And that was just a very easy process to do. Save you some money. And uh, this way you have a, you know, a good mount to look at hanging up on the wall, put in your house. Good to go, ready for next season. Mm -hmm.